This is Colorado Weekly with Public Affairs Director Don Kinney. Each summer, the Aspen Camp School for the Deaf helps young people to cope in our sound-filled world. Grassroots Television produced this report. My name is Andy Collin. I'm not deaf, but a few weeks ago I was a camper here at the Aspen Camp School for the Deaf. It's a pretty terrific place for deaf kids, but it was difficult for me. In fact, on the third day I ran away because it was so frustrating to communicate. I guess I kind of found out what it's like for deaf kids in the world. The Aspen Camp School for the Deaf is 10 years old now. It dates back to 1968, when it was originally, the conception was out of a gentleman by the name of Reed Harris from uh, in Carbondale. And Reed uh, felt that there needed to be a place where deaf children could have an opportunity to learn more about themselves and their environment. Deafness is unique in that you can't turn it off. It's impossible for a hearing person to really imagine what it's like to completely lose their hearing or to be out of contact with their environment. Have you ever met, did you ever see deaf children before? No. Uh, before you came here? Uh, yeah, I will on TV, of course. Yeah, but you never met one, a real no, deaf person? Never met Were you afraid one. to see Dark. deaf people? No. I don't think there are many camps that are located in uh, such a good spot. It's beautiful here. We have many, many mountains that are just a few minutes away and things like that. Uh, the other thing is that this camp is smaller than most camps. I think the children here get more individual attention. And he's our only hearing boy. He came here because his parents wanted Andy to know. Just so they would know what deafness looks like. And he got homesick. After the first two days, when we were at the car show, I think the only reason that Andy's homesick is because he can't communicate well with the other, with the other deaf children. Wayne asked you. Yes. Why'd you go home to see your mom? Well, why? Well, first of all, I didn't think that it was going to, I mean, it wasn't going to be this way. All the kids weren't going to be, I mean, like, I thought that everyone could hear. But you talk, it's like talking to a wall to some of them. And you, I mean, you just, you just forget. And it, it's hard, huh? And it's hard, yeah, when, especially when you don't know a sign that well. That I just had a matter. Why does your mother and father want you to learn how to be with deaf people here? Well, not everybody gets to have a chance to go to a deaf camp like this, but I don't know. They just want me to find out the experience. So... I feel here at the camp, we are in kind of a unique position because we have an opportunity to introduce a hearing individual or hearing individuals into the deaf world. It's an opportunity to, for them to really learn more about themselves, to learn what happens when they're in a situation where they have trouble communicating rather than being a reverse role where the uh, hearing impaired child is always in the situation where they have problems communicating. Mountain looping. 
fire tractor. Okay. Can you just spell his name? Mark? Yeah. Andrew. Some people say The kids at camp were like ordinary kids, except they had to concentrate a lot harder. Some were easy to understand, some were hard to understand, but some of them I only understood part of the time. Hi, how are you today? I mean, how about my day? Me? That oh. way? Are you homesick? A little bit? Two weeks. Yeah, two weeks you go home. Yeah, I think. Goodbye. 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 <laughs> Not two weeks, one week and two days. Uh oh, three weeks. One week and two days! And when Ricky sang, nobody can understand him. We also try to spend a lot of time in talking about their feelings and attitudes and how feelings develop. And that it's okay to become frustrated or to become upset or to become angry. That we all have these feelings and that those feelings are all right. Ricky. 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 Come here. Sam. Come in. Yeah. He says that sometimes you bother him. No. Really? No. Sometimes you bother me. No. No. Yes. I bother me. Bother him. No. <laughs> no. You, you, you bother yeah. everybody. You and bother I'm everybody. Bother Chris is a friend that I made. I tried to use sign language to communicate with him, but sometimes it didn't work real good. Sometimes. There's something about sleeping out above timberline in a rainstorm that really has an effect on you. After you've done it, you come back with a feeling of, yes, I can, I can do it. I can handle the world. There are things that, that I can do in relationship to taking care of myself and in relationship to getting along with other people. What's that? It's a pancake. It's supposed to be. Like, oh, look, look, he's, he's, eating eating he's eating the one that we made. He's eating the one Ooh, gross. That's a pancake. Karen, one. What? The pancake. He put too much. You can <laughs> let put too much. The one that we're making. <laughs> <laughs> the hearing child then starts to learn something about the deaf child and how they can work with them, uh, how that basically they are children. But there's, there are children with a hearing loss, but still, they are children. Uh, it gives the deaf child a chance to learn that the hearing child is also a child, and that he gets into mischief, and that he gets into things, just, just as the deaf child does. And that just because you have a hearing loss doesn't make you innately bad or innately good. It just, you are still a child. How does he feel being deaf? Um, um, uh... Sometimes I feel proud to be dead. But sometimes I get frustrated. There's some things I can't do, like, uh, like understanding the TV. Or, uh, or understanding the telephone. 
And sometimes I don't understand what my parents are talking about. Uh, he, he must feel the same way I sort of do.